to mmg hopefully uh the audio sounds much better this time around last video i had to make like <clears throat> three videos to get that all right so this video is going to be really good so hang in there um it's going to be a good one hopefully it'll be short so i'm going to cover a lot of things right uh we're going to cover uh the economic impact that this uh virus may have and it's all theoretical because there's not enough data uh, right now. But um, we could have some good estimates. Speaking of estimates, I actually found something I've been trying to find for a few days now. Which is a um, software which can predict or predetermine uh, with the spread of the virus. The infection rate and all that. You put in the data sets. And you get a, uh, I'll show you guys, I'll go through it, but it's a software that may give you some theoretical uh, probabilities of how fast this may spread. And um, yeah, it's, uh, you guys could play around with it. I'll post that in the newsroom, links below this video for the newsroom, where I posted all the other videos, like that one that probably scared a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys showed up for that. Um, and there's some more videos as you know as leaks come out I will grab those videos and I'll share them in the newsroom. I share some on Twitter, but not all <clears throat> We'll talk about central banks and the stock market just going parabolic right and uh, We'll look at a few charts towards the end and some news events All right, so first of all, I want to talk about something you guys need to relax on the conspiracies. Listen. I sympath I sympath symp I sympathize sympathize I can't talk with the theorists and I sympathize with the normies and I could even sympathize with the elites, okay? The normies just want to live a life, you know, family, have a good time, just live a normal life. And not let fear rule their life. Right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the theorizers, they want to get to the bottom of the truth. They want to figure out what's going on. Uh, they want to maybe fix things. And they, uh, they take pride in knowing reality and being in reality. Even though you could go far too far down the rabbit hole and not be in a reality. You're in an alternate reality as well. So, <clears throat> for the majority of the population, you're either, you know, a normie or you're, you've gone down the rabbit hole way too far and you live in fear and, you know, everything is planned and I, I don't know, I, I would hate to live like that. Or you're like me, you're just kind of in the middle and you know about everything, you're open to everything, but honestly, in the end, it's not going to matter, believe me. Uh, and then there's the elites, right? I can, you know, I can symp sympathize, sympathize with them as well. Uh, they want power, money, and uh, they view majority of people as pretty dumb and easily manipulated. And there's a lot of truth to that. It's we all see it, right? And um, they get a lot. They get things done. You know, they have goals and they meet their goals. And the problem with every with the with the other two groups is they never actually reach their goals. <laughs> so I could see it from every <clears throat> you have to look at it from every spectrum, right? Now listen, uh, it doesn't matter where it came from, how it started. I mean, I guess it does. I entertain all the scenarios myself, and I you know I look at it from every perspective. But listen, guys. At the end of the day, it's all just good versus evil. Uh, good versus evil was, I mean, it was like this a thousand years ago. Uh, it's here today, and it'll be here a thousand years into the future. And everyone who's alive today is just a fart in the wind, all right? 
<laughs> like it's not a it's not that big of a deal. All right. Uh you know, do your best, do good, be part of that and um we'll just keep going along here. It's going to be okay. All right. I'm just saying this because don't waste time. Don't waste other people's time. A lot of times just going down the rabbit hole is a waste of time. All right. So let's um What should what should I start with? Let's start with the fact that let's start about let's start with the virus, all right? And then we'll get into markets and uh the news and central bank policy and all that. Uh and stick around for it. it's all going to be good. All right. So as of uh the 4th today, February 4th, 2020 uh these numbers right they're all wrong i mean the day this is coming out from china right so i like to 10x it literally and i'm going to show you guys a video of a doctor you know uh giving you his opinion and whatnot um as of today it's 24,000 confirmed uh, about 500 deaths and 900 recovered I'm just rounding them. Now, this recovered number, it's only in China. Well, there's one in Singapore and Japan. I have yet to find any data on actual evidence that someone has recovered and they no longer in their body have the virus and they are no longer infectious. That is information that is being not put out there. And if one of you guys could go and find it, I would really appreciate it because there's, I'm just one person. There's only so much I could do, right? Now, the most concerning out of all of this, now listen, guys, as time goes on, I would not be surprised if China could somewhat contain this and slow the spreading, which is kind of seems like they already are, but we don't really know. But that's not the point. The point is it's gone global and it's so it's so infectious that that's the problem, that it's gone global, right? So flights are still coming in and out, right? And I mean, look, here's the flights. This is China, right? And if this would load, where are the flights? Come on. There's still flights all over China. Um, I believe that some are still coming into the U.S. I'm not exactly sure. I thought Sunday they cut them off, which is good. And I shared a video in the newsroom about how the WHO is probably uh, influenced one way or another, right? And that's sad. Um, and there, that's why it's been being downplayed. And these are all the flights, guys. It's like 100,000 flights on average per day flying around. And the problem is, it, it, I don't think this can be contained, no matter what. Because it's not just coming from China. It's eventually going to spread all over the world. And it's going to be coming from every direction. 360. Like, everywhere. It's going to be coming and going everywhere. All around the world, right? All right. Of course, I've talked about exponential growth, and I'm going to really lay it out now. I talked about populations, right? The big ones that are really we need to worry about is beyond, China's number one, but India's, you know, second. Uh, I would say Indonesia and Pakistan and Brazil, right? And these are all on different continents of the world. Brazil is South America. Pakistan is uh, Middle East, and Indonesia is, you know, beneath uh, China there and some islands and whatnot. What I'm trying to say is, uh, and Russia's nine and Mexico's 10. These continents, they all have cases and they all have extremely large populations and they're not prepared. Their infrastructure, their hospitals, the population, they probably don't even know about it. Most of them, I'm being honest. They probably don't even know about this. What's going on? <clears throat> and, you know, people have to fall in line. And I know it's not very freedom-like to say that, but 
at least one thing is true that China, although there was a lot of free market uh, examples of people shutting off their communities and towns, right? And there is a, but but still, I mean, to, when you're talking about over a billion people, um, everyone does have to fall in line and have to quarantine themselves and take all the precautionary measures and do everything they're told to stop the spread. So you can see today, you know, there was a bunch added here. I shared this in the newsroom as well, this website. I'll share all these links again in the newsroom after I'm done with this video. All right, here's another map. This one's easy to look at. All this data, though, is coming from China, so you have to add, I would 10x it. Here's another good map. I like this one. I'll share this as well, but this is my favorite because it's very uh, interactive, bright colors, easy to read and see, right? And this is what I'm worried about. Uh, no, where is it? By the way, this is live feeds of all the hospitals. Now, you know what's funny, guys? Uh, on my Twitter, there's a ton of pictures of them. They're not just building hospitals right they're acquiring stadiums and large large buildings and i posted these on my tw twitter look at this look at this building it's enormous and they have a bunch of these all over because if anything uh, China's really great at just building giant buildings and ghost cities and whatnot. Those ghost cities would be perfect, right? Look at this. Look at this stadium. It's huge. Look at that. These are stadiums. Now listen... If those numbers that they say were true, they wouldn't be doing this. And they wouldn't, you know, be taking such extreme measures. Look at these buildings. Enormous. Enormous. Spraying the streets with huge trucks. And people walking around spraying everywhere. I mean, it's, you know, they wouldn't be doing all that. All right. What else did I want to show you guys? All right. Well, welcome. So here's this doctor, right? To today's uh, thinking about the uh... real doctor, and um, he forty years practiced. So you know, there's a lot of doctors that are. Uh, I, I like to call, they're academia, right? It's, but they never practiced. They're the ones who write most uh, papers and do all the scientific research and that put it out you know for everyone to read the actual practicing doctors are busy working but the, obviously he's retired and he's just making videos and uh, i post his videos in the newsroom as well this video was extremely extremely important because look what he came to what conclusion and guess what my guess my guess for the past few days is there's probably a quarter million look around two hundred fifty thousand infected all right and I'm just going to play a small clip. You can probably see from that that by the 31st of December, there was 151,000 odd cases. If it had doubled in that time. And today, the 3rd of Feb, that would probably give us about 220. Uh, 220,000, uh, just over 220,000 cases. Um, so I'm sticking my neck out here, but I suspect this is the number of cases at the moment based on that Lancet modeling. If that doesn't scare you, I don't know what, what does. And I'm not trying to, right? We're just doing, we're, I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this so we could find out to take the right actions right 
So February thirty third, the through his forty years experience, real doctor, right? And he's also researching this. He's he's way better than me. I am right. Um, but I've been watching him. He estimates it's around a quarter million today. All right. So that's not good. All right. Um, so let's talk about it. All right. So this is what you guys need to understand. The spread of disease measuring r not. And a lot of you probably are already understand, but I'm going to just cover it real quick. All right. So it's determined by trans transmissibility, contact rate, duration of the infectiousness. Okay. Did you get that? And here's the formula, okay? So transmissibility, which is tra how easily can you transfer it to people? Like, th does it have to be like actual mucus or uh, do you have to sneeze and droplets, micro droplets come out? Or do you not, or it's a dry airborne and that's the problem, guys. You don't even have to have the sniffles You and you could have no symptoms, right? You can just breathe on people, and they're getting it. All right, that's the that's the problem with this thing. All right, there's um contact rate. Uh, so when it lands on surfaces, how long does it stay there? A, I just posted on my Twitter a scary scary new article or finding by this is mainstream that that it could stay on a doorknob, and it could live up to five days now. At first, it was like a day or eight hours, and now it's five days. So we're still learning as we're going, right? But five days, that's not good. That's, I, I, that's the problem. This is not going to be able to be contained. And, and right now, nobody's paying attention because stocks are way up. Uh, everyone's still politicking, and everyone's still talking about the halftime show at sports ball. And this, none of that shit is important. This is the most important thing right now in everyone's lives. Everyone's. And that's why I'm doing it. And I benefit nothing, right, from talking about this because they don't like it, all right? And they, you know what I mean. <clears throat> Dur uh, this platform. Uh, duration of the infectiousness. So, <clears throat> so good news. I do have good news. And I will, I will tell you guys good news when I come across it. So that the last video I said this, some study came out. It's on my Twitter and in the newsroom that once you're, uh, once you become, once you get over the illness, whatever, you're still infectious. Well, that turned out to be wrong, but still there's nothing coming out telling us if it's not true, basically. It just says that that study was wrong. But still, guys, can someone figure out if here's the problem? There's no cure. There's no vaccine. So once your symptoms are all gone, does your immune system actually fight it off? Because when in the data, it says recovered. OK, recovered means you recovered from the symptoms. Recovered does not mean that you still don't have it in. You still don't have the virus. You're still not a host and you're, you're and you're still not infecting others so what i'm trying to say is you get the pneumonia or the flu right and then you survive it now can you go back home and go back out in the public do you still have it in you are you still infectious that's what i need to know and i would really appreciate if someone could figure this out so here's the r not right this is the formula all right now let's uh take a look at some uh past examples Ebola had an R naught of one to two. The span okay, so let's go to SARS. SARS, it was airborne and droplet. Now Ebola was only bodily fluids. So, you know, bodily fluids that doesn't easily transmit to other people. It's it's hard to infect others. Um you have to literally have physical contact, right? Or you drinking something. Alright. It was only one two R naught. Um, SARS was airborne droplets, so sneezing. That was actually two to five. 
five is really up there. So what that means is you infect about five people in the lifespan of you being sick. Um, HIV AIDS, two to five. I, I think it's two. And I, do you know anyone who's ever gotten it? I don't. I don't even think it's that, you know, a lot of people have ever gotten it. And then there's a bunch of other things. Smallpox was airborne and droplet. That was five to seven, are not, which is crazy. That's really high. Uh, but let's go to the 1918 Spanish flu. That's the one that's uh, killed like 60 million to up to 80 or something crazy uh, back in the day, early uh, in the 1918, right? That was airborne and droplet, and that was only an R naught of two to three. The measles was 12 to 18, and it was only airborne. But listen, Spanish flu was airborne and droplet, which was mean it which means that you have to sneeze. Now here's what scares me. This uh let's call it NCOV19 is airborne. It's not it's not airborne and droplet, okay? And that's the problem why it spreads so quickly. I would say it's at least a four or not, if not higher, but we'll find out later, right? And here's the problem. This is how this thing spreads. This is what exponential looks like from person to person, right? So here we have like an R naught of 1.6 to 3.7. So you're infecting people like that, right? And then they infect more. So once this person infects these four or three, these three within a week will infect the rest of this group. Of R naught of 1.3, you know, it might take two to three weeks to infect this entire group. Here's Ebola, right? It only has R naught of two. This would take like a month or something. Um, this has to be wrong. Anyways, uh, 3.6, 3.7. So this is almost four. You will, this will infect the group almost 90% within the first week. Now here's 4.1. This will do it probably within one week to like a week and a few days, right? And then here's 11 to 18. One person infects pretty much half of the group. Now visualize it, use, uh, use your imagination and keep scaling this up infinitely. Not infinitely. There's only 7 billion people or 8 billion in the world. But scale it up. Now, of course, there's going to be measures, right? Uh, quarantines, this and that. Here's my problem. He, I mean, here's what... Here's the problem with all of this. Um, what? First of all, if they come out with if they come out with a vaccine or something right now i know a lot of you are like oh, i'm not gonna take it who knows what the long-term side effects are yeah i know but you know what the long-term side effects of this thing will be here let me show you <laughs> i'll come back to this all right so some of you didn't come to the newsroom i'll give you a sneak peek because it's small no one's gonna see this Right, so here's the newsroom. I share a bunch of info in here. Where is it? It attacks the immune system. So watch this. Right? See, that's what that's what my question is, guys. So once you get this thing, let's say your symptoms are gone, do you still have it in you? And is it long-term going to do this to you right because this is nerve damage right and this this was the scariest part of the video right that i was really promoting <laughs> in my last video because i really wanted you guys to get scared i like scaring you guys all right all right i can't i can't do audio how do i uh Get rid of the audio. Crap. All right, I can't show it. All right, cause I'll get I'll get hit. 
Um, but I, I've got other videos, right? And, all right. That's what I'm worried about. So where was I? <clears throat> we see this thing spreading right now. I mean, Japan just shut down a cruise liner, right? 6,000 people and viruses spread like crazy on those things. They're just incubator, floating incubators with the virus inside. A petri dish, basically. And the problem is, even if, I mean, if a year from now we don't have a vaccine, it's already spread across the entire globe. And even if you quarantine, let's say, one country or one area, that doesn't mean that the rest of the world, it's not spreading everywhere else. And long term, it's going to shut down everything. Planes, trains, boats, shipping container, uh, freight shippers. Uh, listen, guys, when you get a when you buy a product, let's say you buy a vehicle in the United States, even with an American brand name, right? It's assembled in Mex Mexico, but it was manufactured in China, and then China gets the metals and stuff. Let's say from Russia, so the metal, so. The, the metal, the, the resources and minerals come from Russia. They go to China. In China, they fabricate it into, let's say, just a block or a part. And then they ship it to Mexico. And they assemble it. And then they ship it to the U.S. And then they put it together in whole. And that, my friend, is called... Well, it's, it's called the global supply chain and globalism. And... You know, they do this with food. I just heard that in the UK, they fished a bunch of fish. They sent the fish to China where they packaged it. And then they sent it back and sold it in the UK. <laughs> I'm dead serious. This stuff happens with a lot of things. More than you would believe. Also, we have just on time shipping for everything. Food, especially. It's all just on time. Meaning, there's really no warehouses, you know, in your local area besides Amazon. So things you don't really need. But uh, but with food and stuff like that, it's just on time. So, it, you know, the food in your grocery store, it, it arrived there like maybe a few days ago. I'm talking about the fresh stuff. I'm not talking about the boxes filled, filled with like cr uh, crackers and, and noodles. But even that, it, it gets... Every week, you know, when I was really young, when I was a teenager, I worked in a grocery store. We stocked everything, like every two days. Especially dairy and meats and stuff like that. Uh, eggs, right? And everything eventually gets restocked like once a week. Okay? Just so you know. <clears throat> and that's just how the world works these days. Just to cut costs and with this hyper-intertwined... Uh, complex, uh, globalized um, world economy, right? Right now, there's uh, meetings that are being canceled for 500 fortune companies right before earnings. Uh, I just heard that uh, Hyundai cancel, like is shutting down production. And this is going to continue, guys. It's going to continue throughout the world. Companies are going to start shutting down. Uh, as this thing spreads and becomes more of a problem because your employees, you can't have your employees infecting each other. And, you know, um, and that's just that, that demand's going to stop. People are going to stop buying things, right? Because they're not going to be leaving their homes. <clears throat> now, listen, I don't want to be Mr. Doom and Gloom. You, maybe our immune systems will adapt to this thing, or maybe the virus will mutate and it'll actually die out on its own. That has happened with, like, most viruses. So that could happen. It's not, you know, the end of the world. I'm just saying, if this thing does not, like... Uh, but if we can't quarantine it, like, we can't stop it from spreading, the problem with this, that that strand of virus that's going around right now it's going to keep going until we can somehow slow it down and then adapt to it or it adapts by making itself weaker so it can use the human 
as a host because it's kind of like a parasite. All right. So it's not all, you know, the end. Um, although that model simulator, I'm going to show you that towards the, uh, uh, later in this video. So you keep watching because your attention spans are short. <laughs> um, what else did I, did I want to show you guys? So we got the flights. Here's the shipping containers. Look at that. So I, I don't know how many ships are floating. It's probably a lot. From the looks of this, I, it's, it's at least thousands or tens of thousands maybe. I'm not sure. But this is the global supply chain as you can see. It. It's like an organism. Look at this. Just just things and everything just moving around. This is Amazon. <laughs> this is the bloodline of Amazon. And uh, in what is the global uh, engine? It's China. China, right? The global engine of the world because they make most of the things and then they ship it out and everywhere else they assemble it or add to it. Now, that takes us to... Well, uh, hold on. Let me take a look at this. So this was the article before I go to the, before I continue with the global supply chain. This is the article I was talking about. Study claiming new uh, virus can be transmitted by people without symptoms, without symptoms was flawed. Yeah, I'll, I think I posted it. It's on my Twitter, but I'll, I'll post it. It's in the newsroom as well. All right. Before I make these videos, I post everything. And then I make these videos because that's in real time. I collect data and information I post it to you guys as soon as possible so you can use it and then I look over it again before I make these videos all right so let's get to what I want to talk about the economy and stuff <clears throat> all right let's do a, a nice analogy with some pictures I don't know how I came up with this but so the if you've seen this cartoon, the Wiley e. Coyote, right? He's always chasing the Roadrunner. He's trying to catch it so he could eat it. Um, so this coyote is like the central banks of the world, and the Roadrunner is um, is the economy and its growth and its debt and credit expansion. So. The central banks of the world are chasing inflation. So they, they're they chasing inflation to produce artificial growth within the economy. And that's how they're trying to juice the economy, the global economy and the markets. And because they're geniuses and they think they're driving a car and they have some sort of toolbox, right? Their first tool is deception. So when, so like Bernie Madoff's uh, Ponzi scheme, you need to build confidence within the market. And that's their first tool. It's to build confidence in everyone from Wall Street to to everyone in the world that everything is okay as long as you have confidence you have spending and lending and that's the credit in the market that keeps everything turning but the problem is with more debt and with more debt comes less spending because the more debt you have you have to service the debt so the fed here which is wiley coyotes like all right, I'll just figure out more ways to make more fiat and more create more credit and to create more lending. And the and what the the repo markets and what's what QE is and what MMT is, it's all the same thing really. It's jet fuel for the economy and the markets for the spending to continue and for the credit credit to be flowing, right? And the loans to be made. The problem with all this is there's always unintended consequences. And the unintended consequences is inflation. And with inflation, 
comes less spending and less job growth and less productivity and less entrepreneurship and less business growth. So in the end, it, it, it'll, it, what happens is with the car, right? If you keep shooting nitrous into it, like you're in Fast Furious, uh, you know, it'll give you a huge boost at first. But then you'll flood the engine and then it'll just blow up. So that's what kind that's what all this central bank liquidity injections is. Now, China just injected like some crazy amount. I think it was 127 billion. And that's a lot. It's almost a quarter of a trillion, and that's why we just saw the stock market around the world, even in China, just go up despite everything that's going on. All right. So and everyone is chasing yield chasing yield because the markets are so out of whack the bond market is no longer safe you have negative uh yield debt on on government debt and your savings the money in the bank is losing value and you have to start paying interest on your savings to the bank so for holding cash you're going to start paying interest on it and that's insane and why is that and why are they doing this it's because so many corporations and companies and private individuals and even governments and social programs and, and entitlements are so indebted that the only way to get rid of it is two ways. You either just default and say, all right, we can't pay you back, or you slowly make it go away by, by inflation. It's the only way you get rid of the debt. Either way, it, there's no way out, and it's just going to end in tragedy, and and it's going to happen globally. And I think this virus, you know, this possible pandemic, epidemic, is uh, is 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 the black swan. And I was the first one out of everyone, I believe, to call it the black swan. I know some some guys going to say no, man. Well, I said it in the newsroom like the 20th and I, I made a video the 22nd of last month saying this was going to be... Most people weren't even talking about it. All right. Now what happens is the coyote here, the, the central bankers, right? They're, they're all juiced up on steroids and they're pushing the markets ahead and everything. But all of a sudden reality, which is gravity, is going to set in that this is insane. Earnings, growth, debt, uh, it's all out of control. There's not enough earnings and growth. There's too much debt. And eventually the consumer can't buy stuff anymore because they're drowning in debt. And th inflation is actually going to start really hurting everyone. And then everyone stops spending or at some point... They will start spending to get things now instead of the future because they know prices are only going to go up. And what could be a great catalyst for that? To get the gene, the inflation genie out of the bottle. It's prepping. Everyone's going to go out and buy everything they need to, to live off of for possibly for weeks and months. What do you think's gonna? What do you think that's gonna do? It's gonna drive prices through the roof, and uh, everyone's gonna start getting cash out out of the banks. So you could have runs. You could have this prepping mentality. And this is gonna just cause massive inflation, and it's gonna actually expose the real inflation, because what's gonna happen when the market finally corrects? When the market finally prices in that holy crap. This thing is going to just keep spreading and it's going to take the global it's going to take the global supply chain and just put it, it's like throwing a wrench into an engine with gears. It's going to halt it. Listen, I don't care how much the central banks print. The markets can't keep going higher when literally companies just stop working. Like <laughs> everyone just stops going to work and everyone ends up sort of like China. And once the market starts pricing that in, look out below. There's a small exit, and it's a huge. Let's. This is the market, guys. The market is a giant stadium with just like one tiny small exit, and 
every usually with crowds and markets, right? Everyone sort of comes to the same conclusion at the same time. It happens very quickly because everyone's looking to find out what's going on. And usually, so the market can't, you can see a 20, 30% drop in one day. I, you know, in 1980, uh, crap, I forgot, 87 Black Monday, right? It dropped like 50 or 40%, something insane. All right, in one day. And uh, that could happen again. No problem. Especially with all the algos all switching oh, sh to the I got a sell button. All right. All right. So I'm going to show you guys the simulator in a second. Let's just look at a few charts. So yesterday was insane. It was absolutely ridiculous. Here's S&P 500. So yeah, we had a huge sell off, right? Uh, starting last week and Monday. But um, all of a sudden, the market just shot back up. Now, to me, this is a dead cap bounce or a possible rebound, but only because China announced and injected just 100, over $100 billion into the market. And also, for the U.S., I expect a lot of hot Chinese yuan um, actually moving into U.S. equities, artificially pushing U.S. equities up even higher now. I mean, if you thought it was a bubble then, now it's a super bubble because of this. But this is temporary. It can, Yeah, this could continue maybe for a few more days, maybe a few more weeks at the most. But listen, once reality starts setting in that this is going to shut down the entire global supply chain, possibly, or at least even slowing it down, is enough to to finally trigger as a black swan event this bubble and pop it finally because it's so overextended guys i mean this is insane all right here's all the major indices and it, it's 90 degree straight up price action these are daily charts nasdaq s p 500 over here can't see it it's i don't know it's not loading uh here's the fangs dow jones russell 2000 and the vanguard global all right look here's the russell 2000 2000 mid-size companies in the u.s this is great barometer for domestic this thing never hit all-time highs matter of fact it's lagging and it's not recovering like the rest of them for yesterday but the only reason the market's going up is because of the fang and the fang stocks. What are the fang stocks, right? The major largest cap tech giants like what is it? Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. You could add Tesla to it. Um, you could add a few of the Apple, right? Amazon, Apple, whatever. You could add those to it. Those are the stocks that are pushing the entire stock market and everything up because everything these days is an is is not managed by hedge funds anymore they're everyone just with their retirement accounts and they did this on purpose believe me uh just buys index funds so an index fund is more heavily weighted in fang stocks so the entire index fund goes up and then it drags everything higher with it well same thing will happen when in reverse right and why why is it why is this hap why is it like this? Well, one is Ray Dalio. Two is well the the largest revenue source for uh, the government is actually besides income tax is actually uh, capital gains and ta and tax in the stock market. So yes, four hundred one k's IRAs they're all invested in index funds, but so all of the boomers and the public's retirement is in the stock market and it kind of puts in like this floor and kind of fattens it up and then the hedge funds and the institutions take profits and then they pay the the cap tax on it right so that's why uh that's why we have this messed up weird um managed um not no real price discovery market that's why and people keep screaming manipulation. It's not just that. It's the way it's it's structured these days. But it's a big house of cards. And eventually, I, I can't ignore reality. Right? 
I know a lot of people think it'll just forever go up. And even if it does, I don't care. Um, I'm long metals, right? I'm long gold and silver. Now listen, for the private group, yes, we have a strategy in case uh, this thing gets really out of hand. At, at some point, if this virus is that bad, yeah, it'll negatively affect the mining stocks. Well, you know what? You could um, buy ETFs that only follow the under the underlying metals. So if the price of metals go up, the ETF goes up. Uh, yeah, gold took a dip, so did silver. But you know what? I'm not that worried because as every day passes, it looks like this thing's going to get worse. I'll keep you guys updated, right? And yes, everyone is talking about uh, Tesla. It's insane. And... Uh, We'll see if it has a little more upside or not. That's for the private members. All right, let's take a look at the simulation. All right, here's the simulator, and it's free. So you just, uh, you could change these data sets right here, enter data, and it's a spreadsheet, right, Excel. You could do this with stocks. It's just really tedious, and then you could buy software. It's not, you know. You can use your bro your brokerage uh, portfolio uh, account, whatever. All right, anyways, um, you can change these around, the data sets, right? So I changed the data set from the de default to R naught of 4.5. In the initial infections, I changed it to 100, so it lines up with the current date. So the current date is uh well you know it does skip it's not every day it's like every i don't know seven days or five days something like that no it's every 10 days but here's february the 10th this is the closest and uh and this comes in line with sort of our predictions and probably you know the prediction of that um earlier that video of that uh doctor right so this would put it at Total infections at around 200,000 for February. No. Oh, here we go. Man, I need to change this again. Anyways, February 10th. Let's say infections are at about 47,000 total infected. New infections, 37,000. So this is what I'm looking at. New deaths. So total deaths is around 6,000. This is messed up. I mean, you guys got to play with it, right? So it gives me probabilities. So if today, let's say, or no, the 10th. So in a few, today is the 4th. So five days from now, or no, six days from now. If the total infected is at 47,000, then we would have a total deaths of about 6,000. So six days from now. And then we have total population over here. But let's fast forward. What would that look like by the end, by let's say the end of March? By the end of March, that would be um, total infected would be around 63,000. New deaths would be at 6,000. And total deaths would be like 8,000. So by midsummer, if this rate didn't change, we would actually, like let's say June, it would be over a billion. May, yeah, it would be, we already hit 1 billion people because that's how it compounds. Anyways, I'm going to post this. You could download it, it's free in the newsroom. And you guys can play around with it and share your results and whatnot and mess around with the data sets, right? Uh, the r not the infection rate, uh, based on real life information that's coming out. You guys get it. All right. Um, I think, I, you know, I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to make too much of a long video. Nobody will, wa will watch it then because people are like that. And uh, smash them likes. Please, please share my videos, guys. It's the only way my, you know, my channel grows and I'll continue to invest time doing this. And uh, leave anything in the comment section the first day 
I will um, comment back, you know. Alright guys, till next time.